right, we are going to continue with our last lesson for this unit, uh, grade six. Our big idea, of course, continues to be the same. Understanding operations, adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, helps us to solve problems in the real world. Today, we're going to continue with the concept of demonstrating an understanding of division with decimals with a one-digit divider, the different, or divisor, sorry, the difference today is that we are dividing a decimal that is less than one. So a small decimal number that is going to have zeros in the front, not uh, whole numbers in the front. All right, we're going to start by exploring. Um, today we are going to do an exploration section first. And we're going to see what happens when we use a calculator and figure out these uh, questions to see what happens as our number gets continuously smaller. So let's start with 1 divided by 4, which gives us 0 decimal 2, 5. 0 decimal 1 divided by 4 gives us 0 decimal 0, 2, 5. 0 decimal 0, 1 divided by 4 gives us 0 decimal 0, 0, 2, 5. And from that, we can probably already determine what's going to happen next time. We're going to end up with 0, mm -hmm. sorry, 0 decimal 0, 0, 0, 2, 5. So as you can see, each time the decimal place is added here and that one moves a little bit further to uh, the right, we end up adding another zero. Let's try it again. We have 25 divided by 5. So let's take a look. 25 divided by 5 gives us 1. 2 decimal 5 divided by 5 gives us 0 decimal 5. 0 decimal 2, 5 divided by 5 gives us 0 decimal 0, 5. 0 decimal 0, 2, 5 divided by 5 gives us 0 decimal 0, 0, 5. And 0 decimal 0, 0, 2, 5 give, divided by 5 is going to give us 0 decimal 0, 0, 0, 2, 5. So if you're noticing the same pattern I'm noticing, I'm noticing that we are always adding a zero between the decimal and the um, other digits, so the, the numbers that are not zero. So each time we're adding another zero here, I'm sure the same thing will apply here. Let's give it a go. So 168 divided by 8 gives us 21. 16.8 divided by 8. Oh, I bet you there's going to be a decimal in there. Yes, there is. 2 decimal 1. So notice I've moved my decimal 1 place over. 1 decimal 6, 8 divided by 8. 0 decimal 2, 1. So again, I've moved it another place over now. 0, sorry, 1 decimal 6, 8 divided by 8 is, sorry, 0, 2, 1, I got that one already. 0 decimal 1, 6, 8 divided by 8. 0 decimal 0, 2, 1. The next one again is going to be 0 decimal 0, 0, 2, 1. And 0 decimal 0, 0, 0, 2, 1. That same pattern has continued to take place except we didn't always start with the zeros this time, right? We moved one place over, we moved another place over, we moved another place over, and then again, we continue to move a place over, adding that zero in between each time. So as you can see, when you divide with a smaller number, a number below zero, you end up adding a zero in here each time to your answer as it changes. Between. All right, so let's take a look at our connect section. So first they've used uh, the base 10 strategy. I don't love this one, but it's great for starting off with. 
So we have 8 tenths divided by 2. So we've got 8 tenths, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 rods that represent those 8 tenths. We need to divide them into two groups. We've done that. There's one group of 4 tenths and another group of 4 tenths. Uh, if we divide 15 hundredths by 3, we have again a group of 15 hundredths. We've taken them and divided into three equal groups. How many are in each group? Well, five hundredths. So zero decimal, zero five. Now, if we want to use algorithm method, which works quite well, um, we just work our way through. So we have our very small, very small decimal number, zero decimal, zero seven four divided by 8. So we're going to work our way through. 8 goes into 0, 0 times. Really important here to put those zeros in um, and line those numbers up correctly. Hopefully you remember to do that from grade 5. Remember in grade 5 we talked about remembering to keep that 0 and it was going to be important in grade 6 when we did decimals. Well, hello, it is important just as I told you today. Uh, you do need to have those zeros there. So 0, we have our decimal place lined up. 8 goes into 0, still 0 times, 0. Now we're into 7. 8 goes into 7, still 0 times, 0. 0 times 8 is what? 0. Oh, they didn't include that step. 74. All right, so 8 goes into 74, 9 times. 8 times 9 is 72. Subtract leaves you with 2. We bring down the... All right, and we can see that there is no number there. We're going to have to add a zero and bring it down. So we're now with 20 because remember, we cannot have a remi remainder when we are working with decimals. Eight goes into 20 approximately how many times? Uh, two times, eight times two is 16. I'm going to subtract, I'm gonna end up with four. I still have a remainder. I need to add another zero, add that second, add that zero. 8 goes into 40 now. How many times? Well, 5 times. 5 times 8 is 40. I have no remainder. Now, this is where placing your decimal can be tricky if you haven't lined up your numbers correctly. If you've lined them up correctly, not a problem. If you've written all those zeros in, not a problem. And you just bring your decimal up. 0 decimal 00925. All right, let's try repeated subtraction. Now, it gets a little tricky with repeated subtraction here uh, because of all the zeros in front. So we're going to consider this 74, but we're going to have to put those two zeros in front just to keep those places there. Um, 8 goes into 74 how many times? Um, 9. Oh, I guess I need three zeros, sorry, because I'm placing that over top of the 4, really. So 9, 8 times 9 is 72, subtract is 2, I have to add a 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, so I'm adding that 0 there to make it 20, 8 goes into 20, two times, sorry that should have been a 2 there, not an extra 0, 2 is 16, subtract leaves you with 4, we're adding another zero, which means again I have to move my spot over one more. Uh, eight goes into 45 times, which gives us 40, so we're left with zero. So now when we add this up, I've placed those zeros there just to make sure that I've got them in the right uh, positions. If you're using grid paper, um, you can use the columns to assist you with that. But so then I'm left with 0, 0, 0, 9, 2, 5, um, and my decimal should go here. All right, so as you can see, um, doing repeated subtraction with uh, decimal numbers that are quite small like this can be quite difficult. You do need to make sure that you account for all of the digits. So when we're lining up with the fourth digit, we need to have those three zeros in front and then keep adding a zero each time as we move our way over so that our numbers end up being lined up correctly. Um, that can be quite tricky. So again, as you're doing those, make sure you show me so that I can assist you um, and make sure that those are lined up properly. 
All right, and on to concept practice. And remember, I split this up. So you've done those two already. So today you're only working on uh, page 114, and we are dividing with uh, numbers that are less than 1. So that's the key there, less than 1 as compared to last time. Again, for those of you that have misplaced your textbooks or are forgetting them at home, or sorry, forgetting them at school and not taking them home, here are the textbook pages to assist you with completing your homework. Um, wanting to make this as successful as possible for you so that you can manage to get your homework done. Here is your next page. And then here you have your exit slip, uh, only done after all of our um, concept practices have been marked, so we've gotten that feedback. Uh, you might already have done these one, six questions because they were from the last lesson and these questions are from this lesson. As you can see, these are all smaller than zero or smaller than one and start with that zero. So here's that for you in case you've lost yours. And then after that, we can move on to the show what you know. And again, in case you've misplaced your textbook, here you go. Here are the pages for you. Um, press pause and answer the questions as you go. Here's the second set. And the third set. Um, and then you should be ready for the unit test.